We are here today with Shayla Dean from Remax Heritage. How you doing? Fantastic. Thank Good. you, Greg. Thank Thanks for agreeing to chat with me today and I'll give some background and then we'll ask Shayla for a little background and then we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of it. So I first noticed Shayla just from her social media presence, Facebook and Instagram, just because she was always positive and always offering things of value, or at least things that connected with me that I found valuable. And then I went and looked at her profile. She's kind of a shining light out there in the world of social media, which I respect and appreciate that. But then looked at her social media and it turns out we had some mutual friends and she put on a training that was of interest to me. So I actually drove over and attended that. And then she's been on a couple of calls that I put on. So yeah, happy to have you here today and excited to hear what you've got to share. But that's how we kind of got connected to begin with. And so tell us a little bit about how you got into the real estate business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, Greg, thank you so much for reaching out and inviting me to be able to share some of my knowledge and things that I've learned and learned what to do and what not to do over the last 17 years. But before I answer that question, allow me to respond to what you said as far as our connections through social media for agents and even any other business professionals, think about how important that is for your business too, right? What you put out there matters, how you present yourself out there matters because regardless of the interactions that you're getting, people are noticing and they're going in and they're diving deep into who do you know, right? And we want to know that other people have connections with the people that we are inspired by. And that makes that connection even deeper, which caused you to reach out. So think of agents, if they looked at their businesses the same way is there's potential out there. So how you show up on social media matters. So thank you for letting me say that. But sure. as far as how long I've been in the real estate industry and how I got in, so I've been in for 17 years. Not all 17 years have been incredible, but all 17 years have absolutely been a journey. I first started, oh goodness, as a brand new agent for a boutique brokerage that it all goes back to you don't know what you don't know, right? They were offering leads. There was really no system and process. I was just going and doing, right? I was being an agent. I was not being a business owner. It, it had never been presented to me that way. Mm -hmm. So I was with them for about eight years and I was just reacting to whatever came to me. I didn't have a schedule. I didn't have the discipline and determination. I was just performing a duty. So I did that for about eight years, which led me to my next journey, which ultimately led me to Lee Summit. You're now the managing broker and director of opportunity. So you recruit new agents to your brokerage? So I don't just recruit new agents. I recruit people who are new to the industry, people who have thought about being in the industry, people who are disgruntled with the work that they're in right now, and then experienced agents that are just looking to further their career and change their mindset from being just an agent to being a full business owner. Got it. Got it. So what was your vocation before you got into real estate? Oh my goodness. I love answering this question because you think of real estate that puts you in front of all the good people, right? The people at your kids' events and at churches. So I actually worked in the court system, believe it or not. I wasn't in the court system. I worked for the court system. I want to make sure I'm clear with that. But I was an administrative assistant for a district judge. So I handled court dockets, jury trials. Yes, I was the one that was sending out jury notifications to the people of the community. So everything I came across was you know, people in hard and challenging times. And so it was definitely one where I'm like, okay, I've had enough of this. I want to move into something else. So I did that for, oh goodness, probably eight years, if not more, definitely learned a lot, learned how to communicate in challenging times. But yeah, that's what I did before I got into real estate. Interesting. And so what's your favorite thing about what you're doing now? The people. And I know that seems so cliche, but I believe it to my core that we are all put on here for a purpose. And when there is somebody in front of us, they have been put in front of us for a reason. And so for me, I don't look at people from a sales standpoint. I look at them from 
a service standpoint. Like what can I do to help empower and encourage them? It doesn't matter if it's somebody when the target checkout line, does it matter if it's somebody at the tag office? That's just my mission. And it just happens to be that real estate is, I want to call it my pastime, but it's not, it's my full-time career. So. Yeah. So let's talk about what's unique about how you run your business and your operations. Great question. And it is my most favorite thing to talk about because for so many years, I ran my real estate business the typical way, right? How we typically talk about real estate. I'm a firm believer that real estate can be done differently. And so what really has caused me to buy into the REMAX system that I'm in now is we treat this like it's your business, right? You're in business for yourself, but you're not in business by yourself. And so we're surrounded by many, many people that treat it the same way, right? So they're talking about scheduling, they're talking about coaching, they're talking about accountability, they're talking about training and how all of those things are important to our career. I'm an analogy speaker, right? I look at it as a wheel. And when we look at a wheel, it has the spokes that support the roundness and allows it to fully function, right? And so when we remove a spoke from that wheel, what tends to happen? A little wobbly. Right. And so the other areas of that will have to overcompensate, have to work harder to make that wheel fully functionable, right? So I look at it from a complete business development standpoint, and that's really how we do things differently. And that's what has kept me in this, not just in this industry, but with this brand specifically. And I don't want to talk too much on brands. But that's what has kept me committed and loyal to them for 10 years is because it's done differently and it's treated like a business and I'm not treated as just, you know, the typical real estate agent. Hopefully that answers your question. It does. So from a high level, and then we'll probably dig into each one, but you talk about the spokes of your complete business development program. What are the big pieces of that? Yeah, great question too. Coaching, training, consulting, accountability, and masterminds. Most agents, when they get in the business, they think they can't afford a coach. So that goes by the wayside, hence removing one spoke. Now that area has to work extra hard. Training, they tend to go to every training. They tend to not have a business plan and not operate you know, in accordance with it. That's the best way that I know how to explain it. And I can definitely go into each of those further. Yeah. So let's dig in a little bit more details on the coaching piece of it. Think about how much people pay for not even just real estate coaches, life coaches, business coaches. And we do that because we want to be, again, held accountable. We want to be pushed past what we ourselves are willing to do or will do. And there's a lot of people that are high achievers, right? I consider myself one of those. I too have a business coach because he allows me to think differently and pushes me farther past. It's almost like when you think of even being in school, right? You can go out to a game, but sometimes having that little extra nudge allows you to elevate yourself even more. And being able to have somebody one-on-one that's committed to you at a specific time um, on specific dates, I think is extremely important. And what's important about the belief that I have with the complete business development is That is just as important as your training, but most people put that on the wayside because they don't have the funds to do it. It's extremely important in your business development for sure. So you coach your agents one-on-one as well as group settings? So our group settings, we save those more for our business development, i.e. what most people call training, right? We don't want anybody just to come into the classroom and say, oh, check, I know it, let's move on. Um, So we do our group settings, more of the development and then more of the accountability because I mean, think of Facebook, people are constantly posting weight loss journeys and all of those things. It's because they're looking for accountability. They want people to comment on that and it inspires them as well. So those we do in group settings, the coaching, we do that one-on-one and it's very specific. So whether it's a team lead, I'll sit and coach with a team lead who manages people. Because what better person to help a team lead than somebody like myself that also manages people? It's 
applied to every agent inside our model and to their business development. Now, whether they do it weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, it's totally up to them and it's based upon their progress as well. Anything else you want to say about coaching before I jump to the next one? Nope, we can move on. I'm sure coaching will come back because they're really, to me, they're all in the same. So. Right, right. The next one I think was the development and training, which again is kind of intertwined with the coaching, but you have that as a separate spoke on your wheel, right? The development Absolutely. and training. Absolutely. So training is pushed to us constantly, right? In our industry, it's always training, training, come to this, come to that. And what the typical agent does is they react to it because it's new information. They think, oh, this is the answer, whether it's inspiring or comes from a learning-based mindset, we still seek knowledge. Well, there's a difference between being a Jeopardy champion and being somebody that's committed to mastery. I can sit here and tell you, oh yeah, I've been to that. I know that. Well, when we come from a mastery mindset, there's three stages. The first one is the intellectual mastery. I comprehend, I understand, I've been to that training, I know that. The second level of being a mastery base is behavioral mastery. It's taking what I know and then putting it into action. So I know it, therefore I'm behaving in a way that's in alignment with what I know. Because you run across people all the time. They're like, oh yeah, I know that. And you're like, well, wait a minute, why aren't you doing it? And it's okay. Some people don't put into action everything that they know. Then there's that third phase and it's called mastery base. It's being more of instructional mastery. I know it. I behave in a way that is in alignment with what I know. Therefore, I could teach it. We get agents all the time that may respond, oh yeah, I've already been to that. I'm not just one to go, okay, great, you know it. I'm like, okay, well, let's think about this a little bit deeper. You know it, therefore, would you be willing to teach it? Most people do what, Greg? When you're like, hey, would you teach? What do they typically do? They freak out because, yeah. They're like, nope. And so a lot of times that's because when we are put on the stage and put on the spot, we know what goes on behind the curtain. If I'm sitting here teaching a class on activities management when it comes to schedule, but yet I'm not operating on a schedule, it tends to make me feel as though I'm being a fraud, right? And that when you put me on the spot, then it challenges me. But if we change our framework around it and our mindset around it and look at it as an opportunity that, okay, I know this, I'm behaving that way. Therefore, now I have an opportunity to teach it. And it's not about the student. It's also about me as somebody being mastery based. Because when I get in front of somebody and I teach them, I too have to elevate my game, just like you doing these interviews and recordings. You have to show up your best self. You're listening to podcasts, I'm sure. You have a business coach. You read. Same thing with me because I have to elevate myself when I'm responsible for teaching that. If there's one thing that I could say, it's everything that you should be attending and listening to should be in alignment with your vision that you have for your life and your business plan. Stop reacting to every invitation, every bright, shiny object that says, oh, this is going to be the answer. It's all within you, right? And if you listen to everything that's in alignment with your career development plan, kudos to you, right? You're moving one step closer to where you want to go. It's the agents that are very random and reactionary that are not getting the footing in their business that they're looking for because they're just trying to find versus taking a very intentional and proactive approach. So I know that was a long-winded answer, but I told you before we started our call, I am so passionate about this. I speak with so much conviction because I believe that there is no other way. Love what you said about mastery. And if there's somebody out there that wants to elevate their knowledge or their mastery of something, we'll teach it. That's going to force you to go to a way higher level than you're probably at right now. That's one of the reasons that I'm doing this is because it forces me to go deeper and improve my knowledge. So that was a great answer. So the next spoke, I think, was consulting. Yeah, so consulting is pretty basic. Everybody probably gets this where they currently are typically because their broker is in a consulting role most of the time. We're talking about contracts. We're handling inspection notices and resolutions. So we're consulting them through the business process as well. Those are really shorter conversations. They're very quick questions, very brief answers. I'm all about empowering people to think on their own. I want to ask certain questions to empower them. I don't want to be the answer. 
for everybody's problems. So they'll come to me. They know I'm going to ask them a question. How were you thinking to handle this? Because to me, from a broker standpoint, as long as it's ethical and as long as nobody gets hurt, my way is not the only way. I want to empower these agents and these business owners to think on their own. So those consulting conversations are very brief. They're typically shorter, but an agent needs that, right? Because they need that support contractually as well. So it's not that it's my least favorite. It's just the easiest, most typical area of that complete business plan. Right. So let's move into the accountability because I think that's a pretty important piece of your whole plan. Right. I went like that because everybody hears the word accountability as adults and we're like, didn't we grow out of that? I don't need the rules, the regulations. It has such a negative tone to people. To me, I love it. I'm like, bring it on because accountability is important to me owning up to your mishaps, being responsible for it. A lot of times that's your answer, right? Talking through it and going, okay, what could I have done differently? How could I have done this better? And it's really making sure agents are in alignment with what their vision is for their life. And then their business plan, because everybody should have a business plan. Well, who's helping hold you accountable to ensure that you reach the goals that you want to reach? Most people can't raise their hand, Greg. They have a business plan. Most people go to business planning and they come out like, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm going to do 50 deals this year. When if you look, they maybe only did 15. Well, we all know something has to change in order for you to excel at a higher level. That's why those five spokes are extremely important. We do quarterly accountability with agents because I believe wholeheartedly that it's not about the numbers. I'm responsible for walking alongside them and ensuring that they reach their full potential and they can fund the life that they want to live. Shouldn't we be more serious about that as leaders to have those hard conversations and say, hey, what is your vision? Making sure that that's so relevant to them. Does your business plan fund that? And if it does, are you doing the vital activities consistently that your business plan says that you need to, that fund your life, like make those connections. Most people do the business plan and then they throw it out and they're like, okay, I did it, check. And then at the end of the year, what happens when they don't reach their goals? They're like, oh, it's no big deal. Better luck next time. We can make as much money as we want, but we only have so much time. And if we are not treating our time like we're treating our money and being very specific and intentional and proactive, it goes back to your life vision. Like, do you not have one? Is there not a purpose and a meaning that you're trying to fund? I could talk about that topic all day long, all day long. So I'll pause there and let you proceed us further. <laughs> so a couple of things come to mind. I was on a call a while back with a gentleman named Jim Hewling. He was one of the authors of the Four Disciplines of Execution. And he was talking about strategies, fun, making your business plan. That's exciting. Where the rubber meets the road is you've got to execute I assume that's what you're talking about when you're having their accountability meetings. Are you executing on these fundamentals that you have to do so that your overall plan comes to fruition? That was one thing that came to mind. And then one other thing, you've met my friend Carl, you've been on a couple of calls with him. He said this one time and it stuck with me for people that get the word accountability. He's like, that's kind of a heavy word. If you don't like that word, I like to substitute capable. So I'm going to hold, nice. I'm going to hold you capable instead of accountable. Capable just means I know you can do this. Let me help you if I can. I love that. It brings a level of belief in oneself versus accountability brings kind of that disbelief in right. yourself. If we come from a learning based mindset, meaning who I was yesterday is not who I'm going to be today. And it's certainly not going to be who I am tomorrow. And that's because we are learning based and we're held accountable for the things that we believe in and the things that we want. So often we can blame everybody else for what we don't have. But at the end of the day, all of those roads lead back to us and having somebody else that we can talk to that we know that they care about us, that we can trust them and that it comes from a place of love and kindness. Like I'm all for it. And I know that with my business coach, like Greg, if I'm not crying at the end of that call, and it's not because he's mean to me, but he knows that he's hit on something that I know in myself that I'm avoiding. 
or that I know I need to do, or I need to get outside of my box or outside of my own way, that helps me. And so, yeah, you're right. If we look at it as the area of allowing us to be capable or even more capable, why wouldn't we want to do that? Like that comes from a place of love and kindness more than anything versus going eat. And my guess is people don't like it because they don't want to be called out on their own crap, but that's what helps us get better. So so then the last piece, I believe, of your uh, complete business development is the mastermind aspect. Yeah. So that goes back to group settings as well. I'm a firm believer that people have lived before us. The typical agent likes to be very creative. Agents will spend hours developing a flyer or whatever. And that is not your highest and best use of time. There are people that have lived before us and I'm blessed to be in a system that provides us any marketing that we want. If I don't have to recreate it, what does that buy me back? Time. Time that I can reinvest into other areas of my business. It's not that marketing isn't important, but when you mastermind around other people who are high-minded, who are learning-based, who are willing to endure, patient, accountable, all those things, it brings you to a whole nother level. It's the same thing for me as a broker. And when I mastermind, and even on some of our calls masterminding, is that allows us to elevate and even come up with one idea out of a conversation with others. You can't be closed fisted in those masterminds. I know a lot of people that are like, oh, well, this is my idea. I'm going to do it and I'm not going to share it. Well, come on. We're all in this together and copying is the best form of flattery in my opinion. And when you mastermind, you're helping elevate other people, not only by sharing what you know how to do, but then there's something that you're going to walk away with, whether it be how to say something, how to maybe do something differently. I've been in the business, like I said before, 17 years. There's not one mastermind I've walked out of, one development course I've walked out of where there is not something that has elevated myself or my career. There isn't. So that's good. It's kind of like going to the gym. You don't feel like it, but when you get done, you're glad you did. So I always say the times that you don't feel like something, it's typically because your mindset's off, which means what? You need it more than ever. So whatever it is you're resisting, you need to ask yourself why you're resisting it. And chances are you need it more, now more than ever. So just get up and go. <laughs> Do it. One of, one of my coaches, Brian Johnson, talks about that a lot, about the worse you feel, the more committed you need to be to your protocol or to your fundamentals. And if you do that consistently, you develop, he calls it emotional stamina. Could you imagine what your life would be like when it's like, the less you feel like doing something, the more you're committed to doing it and how you would spiral up if you took that attitude. So yes. It comes back to you being intentional. Why are you going to the gym? All roads lead back to vision, in my opinion. When we look at agents and their businesses, if we go back to their vision of what they want for their life, right? We work to live, not live to work. Therefore, that business plan is in direct alignment with what it is that we want to fund. But there's a day where we feel like operating outside of what our business plan says. All we need to do is go back and read that vision and remind ourselves why getting up is important. Why showing up is important. Why development is important. Why accountability, all those things are important because there's something that we're trying to fund. We're going to live intentionally and we're going to be proactive about that and not waste any time that we have at all. I want to save some time at the end for the vision piece because it seems like we keep referencing. Let's lead back to it. I'm a big believer in dominating or mastering the fundamentals and especially when times are tough. It's an interesting market. I don't need to tell you guys what we're dealing with in the lending world. The question is, what do you do when something's tough? And this comes from Carl as well, that you double down on your fundamentals. What are those core practices? What are those core actions that you do if you're struggling or if you're going through a challenging market? Double down on those things. So I wanted to get your thoughts about about fundamentals and doubling down when it's tough. Thank you for asking these questions because they are so important. When we look at the market, it's important for us, number one, as agents to be aware of it, but it should never change the fundamentals. It should never change the foundations and the basic things that we know. The market is not going to control my income. Why do I believe that? 
It's because I am focused day in and day out on the basic fundamentals of this business, the basic things that I need to do on my business plan, and I am doing them day in and day out, right? Sure, there might be a day where you don't feel like it. Okay, next day, get back to it. Look at how quick things were selling. How many listing agents do you think dropped what their marketing plan was? How many agents do you think did that? They did. A majority of them did because they're like, oh, I don't have to do X, Y, Z because it's flying off the shelf. Well, what did they do? They shifted their basic fundamentals and their basic operational model. They shifted those things based upon the market. So when we sway based upon the market, what we know we should be doing day in and day out consistently, what is our business going to look like? It's going to be peak and valley as well. But if we stand firm on our vision, our business plan, what we're supposed to be doing inside of each of those, it all goes back to activities management system. This tells me what I'm doing day in and day out, regardless of what the market's doing. I am not going to veer off of this because my business is not going to be determined on the market. If they go in with that strategic thinking and stay focused day in and day out, that's going to make a huge difference because then it's not going to be peak and valley. Most people blame the market, blame the interest rates for why they are where they are in their business. Newsflash, it's you. It's your inconsistency that is causing you to get the results that you're getting. To me, having an activities management system says I'm going to be intentional and proactive, meaning I'm going to move towards these items that I have blocked out versus react to what the world brings me day in and day out. That only accomplishes everybody else's need of me. My activities management, that accomplishes what it is that I set out to accomplish. Let's talk a little bit about mindset because I've had coaches. I believe everybody should have one. One in particular coach, it didn't matter what the question was. He always started with mindset. So for him, it was, it was always about mindset first and foremost. What you're talking about dealing with the market oftentimes, or maybe all the time comes back to what's your mindset. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. That's so true because you could look at one specific message that somebody delivers and somebody could look at it and allow it to consume them and change their way of thinking. If you don't have core values and control of your mindset, you're going to be a sponge and you're going to get that information and it's going to just infiltrate your mind. To me, it's about how do you show up for yourself every day? I have the mindset that I have, Greg, because I've been intentional about it. It doesn't mean that I don't get frustrated, but I don't allow it to take up real estate in my mind. It comes in and it goes out and I release it. Anybody that is dealing with people, you have to be right in your mind because that's how you're going to show up for everybody else. I don't care if it's a devotion, if it's a podcast or whatnot. Part of that business development piece and your blocking needs to be personal development. You need to ask yourself, what areas am I weak in? And then develop those areas because mindset, it's going to affect how you show up for people. If somebody says something that's not kind or encouraging, my response is always like, okay, how could we think about that differently? Or how could we say that differently? Because how we speak attracts certain things to us as well. So Man, getting your mind right, you're going to have bad days. There's no doubt about it. But you can change your mindset by choice. You have a choice what you listen to. You have a choice what you read. You have a choice what you post on social media. Some of the stuff that I see, I'm like, why would you put that on there? I want to attract people that have good mindsets, people that want to think differently, people that want to behave differently. It's all a choice. Mindset is a choice. You can take one instance and look at it bad. You can take the same instance and go, okay, I'm going to reframe this. Something negative comes in, reframe it into something good and be intentional about that. You have to choose to do that. Otherwise, you're just going to get down and get deeper and deeper and deeper. Perfect. Thank you. So let's talk about your favorite topic, life vision. All roads lead back to a vision, right? It does because think about it. There's two costs in life. It's time or money. You can always make more money, but time is something that is so precious. It is more precious than gold. 
but yet we value money more than time. We're saying yes to the things that do not serve us. People will spend time doing things for other people that aren't relevant, but yet their money they're so careful with. People have budgets. They're so careful with their money and they'll just spend their time. And I always look at them, I'm like, why, why do we not treat our time the same way? The last 45 minutes we've been on the call, we can't ever get that back. So how do we use that time in a way that is towards our mission in life, that's towards our business plan, that comes from a service mindset? And when I go back to my vision for my life, I don't want to be at the end of my time and look back and say, I wish I had. I want to look back and say, I am glad that I did X, Y, and Z. I am glad that I was intentional with this. The thing that makes me cringe the most is why well, don't have time. No, my friends, there's no difference between you and a $24 million producer because they have 24 hours in the day too, right? And if we look at that, then no longer are we comparing ourselves to what somebody else has, how much somebody else is making. I don't care, right? All I care about is that my agents are funding the life that they want to live. And we are going to be very specific, very intentional, and very proactive with that process. And it takes time to do that. So how we invest our time matters. There are so many people that I have seen in this industry that are top producers that if you say, hey, how's your life? Their relationships are struggling. They're not showing up for their family. They're not doing the things that they're supposed to be doing as human beings. Chances are they're probably not operating off of a business plan. They're just reacting to every demand of them. And when you are a producer, you get noticed and there's going to be demands. That's not going to end. But if you have a budget for your time and you have a vision for your life, and if that's getting funded, there's always going to be more money. But the time, Greg, it is more precious than gold. And I just want the people that are under my wing and within my touch to understand that is more valuable than anything else that we will ever have. I made myself misty eye. Gosh, <laughs> I do. I believe in it so much. I saw something recently where somebody said, hey, Shayla, what if I gave you a million dollars? Would that make you happy? Well, sure. Well, what if I gave you a million dollars, but you couldn't wake up tomorrow? You can keep your million dollars. I'd rather have some more time. So yeah, that just kind of struck me when you were talking about the value of time and money versus time. Have you ever read Og Mandino's The Greatest Salesman on Earth? I have. So that one section in there where he says a man at the end of his life is not wishing for more gold. He's wishing for more time. Exactly. And the, the thing is, we watch our bank account go up and down, right? We're spending, we're, we're bringing in money. Time is something I don't think we treat it right because it shows up every day. Like we don't have to do anything. I get it. I get the next 24 hours. We don't have to do anything. It just keeps showing up. Therefore, it's like giving your kid a car. They don't take care of it as well as they do if, unless they have to buy it. We assume that it's guaranteed because it keeps showing up every single day. But man, how specific and meaningful would your life be if you showed up every day and you operated with what's in alignment with what your vision is? And I've even gone as far as creating a mission for myself that I use no matter where I am. How beautiful is that? And money is a byproduct of that. The amount that I have made because I have changed a few of these things and have started to operate like a true business owner, I want to say I can't explain how it just shows up. But no, it's showing up because I'm living a life of abundance. Like, come on now, who wouldn't want that? So this is good. You know, as we get towards the end here, I just wanted to, to ask you what keeps you in the real estate business at this point? You can see this, but you probably can't read it. It says people matter. My daughter, her best friend from high school, I had her make that for me because it, it was important to me to have these words on the wall to be reminded. It's my mission to impact and empower others. It doesn't just have to be real estate agents. It's going to be whoever I come into contact with that's serving me at a restaurant, whoever's serving me when it comes to the tag office or whoever I'm in front of. When I wake up and I know that my mission in life is to impact and improve others, 
I can do that whether I have my real estate pin on or not. That's what gets me up every day is I know that God has put somebody in front of me for a reason and I am not going to waste it because there's so much of my life where I just woke up, got stuck in the every day, just showing up. I know I have to go to work. I have to do this. Again, it shifted my mindset of going, okay, why am I here? I'm here to make an impact and serve others. And everybody that I come into contact with, they're going to get the best version of me and they are going to walk away a better person. Quick story for you. I flew to, I think it was Birmingham, Alabama. And my kids know this about me, that if somebody meets me with tension, frustration, or they're just not loving their job, I see that as a challenge of how can I get them to smile or how can I get them to have the best experience from me versus me going, I'm about to not get the best experience from them, right? I'm like, how can they get the best experience from me, even though I'm on the other side of the counter? And I walked up and I just said, how's your day? And by the time we walked away, Greg, she was laughing. She was smiling. She said, thank you. And my kids are like, mom, why do you do that? I'm like, because they're probably faced with so much resistance during the day because people meet people based upon somebody else's pulse. I'm like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And it also allows me to stay in my mindset of viewing the world differently versus the ebbs and flows of somebody else maintaining my internal temperature. It's the people and how I show up for them. I believe that to my core. You know, it's human nature. If you're grouchy, it's human nature for me to be grouchy back. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the fact that you maintain your sense of who you are and have that impact. Again, Carl keeps coming up. We were having a conversation one time. I was trying to think of a name for a project I was I'm still working on. It was basically something leadership. And I'm like, but I also like something impact. And Carl's like, that is leadership. Leadership is impact. And so that's what leaders do. They make an impact. And so, yeah, I love the fact that you talked about the impact that you have with people because that's what leaders do. If you allow what's going on around you to cause you to be peak and valley, we talked about it from a business standpoint and also just from a personal standpoint, it really goes back to how you're rooted. What are you rooted in? Core values are huge. When we think of the levels of learning, you want to be mastery based in your core values. Nothing else gets in the way of those things. And if you're rooted in that, think of trees that are deeply rooted. They're going to sway with any weather that they're given right? It's not going to impact. The only way that it does is if they're weak or if the root system is not fully developed. So that's what's important when you wake up every day to get your roots deeper into your thinking, what your core values are, if you're faith-based, whatever that is, focus on your roots, get those deeper. And it allows me to wake up and serve other people because I'm not bringing my crap to everybody else right? I'm addressing it. I'm getting deeply rooted. I'm having these conversations with myself and I'm showing up. Just think if everybody did that, Greg, if everybody showed up their best version, the world, would it not be a better place? Like, yeah. Absolutely. So any final thoughts you'd like to say as we get close to wrapping up? Oh my goodness. There's always so much. My biggest thing is if you're a business owner, it doesn't matter if you're in real estate or not, ask yourself, have I ever written a vision for my life? Have I ever asked myself, why is it that I work? What is it that I'm trying to fund? And then making a business plan based upon what I'm trying to fund. And then asking yourself, do I have an AMS? We call it an activities management system that is very specific to what it is that I'm trying to fund that reaches the vision in my life. If anybody's ever interested in sitting down and having the conversation, I'm one where I'll take my pen off. Brands aside, we're all human beings just trying to reach our full potential and get to the end of our lives where we're like, hey, I'm glad I did. And if I have the opportunity to sit in front of someone and just consult them through the process, by all means, I'm happy to do that because I have found that's what has kept me here in this brand is because the conversations are different. It's around business mindset versus just being random and reactionary because our time is limited. And if I can impact somebody else through a, a conversation over coffee or lunch, 
by all means, I would be happy, happy to empower them for sure. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. This has been fantastic and would love to have you back sometime in the future. If you're willing, maybe we can make this a semi-regular event where we get together and catch up and see if anything new is going on. But in the meantime, appreciate you, appreciate your leadership, your impact, and keep shining bright. Thank you, Greg. Have a good day.